Top Joe 200. Hey, check that out. It's 333. Okay, this way on September 3rd. Wow, 333. Who would have thought? In 2023. All right, we got a lot of threes going on. Okay, threes. So, uh, what are we doing here? Are we maybe in the third week? This is like mind blowing. Okay, 3333, three, 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 uh, 2023, third week. We should have this called Joe 333, but it's not. It's Joe 200. Okay, so um, uh, it's Labor Day weekend, okay? And you check it out. See, I'm wearing this. Is, my son gave me this shirt because he worked for the state parks right here. And uh, it's my America shirt. Here, check it out. See? It's the state park shirt. Very cool. Um, and what do you guys do on Labor Day? Um, that's right. You're watching this lecture about Jero 200. For you guys that are new, and believe it or not, we still have people adding, which is great. Keep telling your friends, keep adding, because we, we've we been doing this for so long, we have it dialed in in terms of um, what we need to do to catch you people up. Uh, for you need, for those of you people that are new to Jero 200, we send all kinds of emails and reminders and support information all the time. All you got to do is read your emails. I know you guys are the text buddy generation. You like to text. You don't like emails, but sadly, the professional world that precedes you is all about emails. So you just got to buy into this concept and check your emails, okay? Um, what are you going to check, okay? Well, you're going to see, this is like just crazy amount of information. This is how the semester started, and then right here, this is how to get an A in Joe 200. It tells you how to navigate this course, okay? So if you're new to the class, watch this. You can find this in lots of different places, okay? Where else are you going to find this? Well, we actually have a um, a folder, okay, that is all about catching you guys up, okay? So you see lots and lots of folders here, do, 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 do. okay? Here it is, the how-to folders, okay? How-to, how-to, what? Get an A in JR 200, all right? So you just kind of really goes through everything in written form, okay? You watch that video, it's the same video, okay? Um, if you're new to using Turnitin, discussion boards, um, um, you know, if you want to know what I have to do to join, when I join Tarot, Tarot 200 to catch up, Julia Walsh is the court administrator, okay? That's her email right there, and you can download the, the syllabus, but everything you need to know is in these videos, okay? This is all your help folders, how to check your grades, on and on and on and on, okay? Awesome. We're going back here. Okay. Who's Julia Walsh? Well, there she is right there. All right. She got her law degree from USC, 1993, was a super successful corporate attorney for many years, and now is a super great teacher, successful teacher to have on board. So your career can do this. And these are all my friends that are all graders. This is one of my oldest friends right here who is also a co-instructor, Tara Mastro. And there's my other friend. That's Lucy. Hey, Lucy, what are you doing? What are you doing, huh? This is a good girl. Okay, awesome. All right. There you are. That's a good doggy. So what are we doing, guys? Okay, let's go into our weekly assignment. So if you're new to JL200, uh, this is what we do. Every week we have an assignment, and it's all lined up here. We called this week one. This is week two, and like I said, this is week three. Okay, you click right here. And this video that you're watching right now, you'll find it right in here. I'm going to send it out to you as an announcement as well, okay? <clears throat> All right, so I talk you through the assignment in this video and how to interpret the, um, the information that you're consuming. It could, could be videos. It could be, um, could be uh, reading assignments, okay? This is going to be reading assignments along with the little kind of interactive exercises that exist in the reading assignments, okay? So... Up to this point in time, we've been, you know, setting the framework for you, laying out the lay of the land um, for um, having more and more older people in every segment of society and what impact that has globally, not just the U.S., but in lots and lots of countries all around the world. Again, looking back to the U.S. and seeing how we stack up, okay? Um, big time economic implications, big time Political implications, implications connected to those economics, okay, has a lot to do with, look who it is this time. I want to give you a key. Hey, Desi, are you stretching? Come here, buddy. Come here. Okay, Desi's got the blue collar. See, Lucy had the red collar. How you doing, bud? 
Awesome. We have two Hellraisers in this house. Uh, teenage dogs, basically. Not quite two years old. Oh, there they are. Look, they're over there at the door. They're going to get somebody. Hey, get them. Go, 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 go. Come here. Shh. Lucy. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. All right. This is not a dog show. Um, all righty. So, uh, so now we're, we're going to uh, put you in this position now, uh, as indicated right here. Okay. Kind of a career position. A lot of you do have no idea where you're going to end up. And um, there's there's obviously a huge amount of potential doing data analytics right now. I just, uh, one of my old friends, Tim Liu, just got a job working for New York City doing data analytics, okay? So he just moved to Manhattan. He was a SoCal boy his whole life. And, uh, um, and a big part of data analytics is being able to figure out how to examine the different segments of the population um, what we're going to do the here and now, okay? So living in the moment, what are the problems? But but most importantly, making big, giant future projections, okay? And how to adapt. And that's a lot of what we went over in the first two weeks is that um, uh, a lot of the, the, the younger countries, uh, so-called developing countries, are looking to the developed countries who've already gone through this transition in their age structure for solutions, okay? How are we going to pay for all these right retirees? How do we pay for their health care? How do we deal with suddenly not enough children around to do the, the caregiving? Okay. Uh, what do we do about the transfer of assets? All these kinds of things. Okay. And so um, this sets you up in terms of, okay, this is how we're going to do the data analysis. And we're going to look at um, what are called demographics. That's just looking at um, the individual defined segments of the population and then how that relates to something like public health as well and uh and the kind of research you're going to do so there's health right there okay these are just a few of the organizations a few foundation and we're going to look at their website they have you know lots and lots of opportunity for employment doing again data analytics looking at people um the kaiser family foundation okay this is a, an offshoot of kaiser permanente permanente the big giant healthcare program, the biggest healthcare program in our country, okay? And then the analytics uh, uh, program, the RAND Corporation, that is all about economics and and making projections, okay? Guiding politicians. So this is, this is a really important stuff, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do with assignment three is indicated right here, okay? We're gonna look at um, three articles, okay? That go about the, def uh, the defining of the individual generations because it makes it really easy to talk about and also makes it easy for all of us when we're doing analytics to be be making the same kind of defined organization okay all right in general the um each of the generations are about a 15 year period plus or minus they've gotten a, gotten more strict about that back in my generation it was closer to 17 years when i say years they, they're talking about the year you were born and, and then they give it a gap of about 15 to 17 years, and then that is the generation. So um, I'm a baby boomer because I was born in 56. I have an older brother who was born in 46, still part of the baby boom, okay? So, um, and it's all about defining that. All right, so we're going to go into um, this first article, okay? And we're going to talk about defining generations, talk about... Uh, uh, Gen Z's, okay, that's you guys, and then the up and coming generation, all right, we'll talk about that, okay, because um, we we got to uh, to make sure that when we're making um, uh, political economic decisions um, that we can d define the impact on each group, okay, and plan for each group, all right, so what you can do and what we always do for new to this class, I like the URL first, okay, um, we know that sometimes that um, websites can get cranky. And so we always have a PDF file as well. So this is a PDF file that's a backup for the URL, okay? All right, so let's take a look um, about defining the generations, okay? All right, so this was uh, 2019 when this guy was written, so four years ago, okay? And um, so where do the millennials end and the Gen Z generation begins, okay? And I guess, like I said, it's, it's, it's roughly about a 15-year a gap, okay? They talk about how, to, you know, up to that point in time, we've been, been defining generations really um, based on that period of history, 
okay? Um, so my parents were called the great generation, okay? They were called great because they endured World War II, okay? And everything that was all about that, okay? And then my generation, okay, when everybody came back from World War II, um, there was economic prosperity, okay? A lot of pent up demand, if you know what I mean? And next thing you know, there was a lot of reproduction, okay? And so we were a boom of babies. So we were the baby boom generation, all right? Um, then came uh, the millennials, okay? Um, and they, you know, um, they were, you know, roughly approaching, uh, um, the, you know, the, the tr transition in, um, from the um, 1900s to the 2000s, okay? Gen X's, on and on and on. There was some, so all, so, so Gen X was, was, was a quirky one, you know, where'd that come from, okay? And then Gen X preceded you guys, okay? And, um, and so, um, so there was some conversation, what do we call it? And just from what people were typing, typing in the different websites and in news media, the most consistent, and that is the most consistent reference, and this is what they're showing the references right here, was Gen Z, and it stuck, all right? So you guys became Generation Z. Um, and what, we'll, what we see is um, um, when we look at, you know, who is who and when, you know, you can see when you were born, okay? This is the Gen Zers. Again, this is about a 15-year uh, range. Again, this is the Millennials, about a 15-year range, Gen Xers, okay, boomers, and silence, okay? All righty. So uh, we skipped an alphabet here, all right? We could have called this a, um, a Gen Y, but they, they were just so right on top of, um, of uh, the millennium when they were coming of age that they just that's what they got called, okay? What are we calling uh, the next generation? Your little brothers and sisters, maybe even, even your children, okay? What's the next generation? I looked it up and guess what it is? We're calling them Generation Alpha, okay? This would be the people born from 2010 to around 2024, roughly 15 years, okay? Awesome, all right, so let's go back to this. That's the defining of generations, okay? Now we're in agreement. So when I start talking to people um, in um, Chile and I start talking to people in Taiwan and we're doing kind of global analysis, we're all speaking the same language because we've made that, that definition. And that's what that's all about. Pretty, pretty simple stuff, okay? Awesome, okay? So then um, from that, we start, we're also gonna look at um, some of the unique experiences that each of these generations that we've defined have had, okay? And that's what this second article is all about right here, okay? So, um, so again, there's a PDF file, and then there's the actual URL, right? So we go into the actual URL, all right? And we're looking at trends that shaped each generation, okay? Um, millennials are gonna outnumber the baby boomers by next year, okay? That was in, we'll take a look at what, when this thing was written, okay? It was written in 2018, so that meant in 2019, there's more, why? First of all, oh, baby boomers are dying off. Second of all, even if we just replaced ourselves, okay? Um, let's say we just had two kids, like I did, okay? Um, just from that momentum, there's going to be um, um, more of the millennials. And, and in reality, people were having somewhere around 2.5 to 2.7 kids. And so, yeah, this is, that's why you, um, you're outnumbering us. We, we're passing away as boomers, okay? All righty. Let's look at some other trends right here, okay? Um yeah, this is what's being thrust upon us. And this was thrust upon, this is, you know, coming up on in a couple of years. So 2016, 2002, 2026. So, you know, in three years, we're going to see that this number is actually up here close, approaching 30%, okay? Uh, one of five Americans are li living in what are called multi-generation households, which we have here, all right? So, uh, you know, both my kids went to college. Um, one graduated last year from USC, the other graduated uh, about five years earlier from USC, okay? Um, one's going into his master's degree um, next, this September. The other one finished his master's degree, is working, okay? Everybody's living at home, all right? We have a big enough facility to handle it. We have to set up some ground rules that are tough to follow sometimes. Um, but it's all about 
the cost of living here in SoCal, okay? Um, they could easily be out on their own if they were living in um, uh, uh, a part of our country that was not so expensive, but that's not the case right now, okay? All right, so this is um, the number in millions of people, all right? So since 64, we can project this up here into the 80 million people nowadays that are doing the multi-generation household. Um, people don't get married anymore. That's no big surprise to you guys, okay? So this is a shift, a generational shift. And uh, even I was pretty late in the game, okay? My parents, you know, that just wasn't, that wasn't even in the works, okay? So there's just been this societal difference in terms of marriage. Um, I didn't get married until I was 31. Julia was 24, okay? We, we actually had met four and a half years earlier, all righty? Awesome. It also set the wheels into motion to have for us having kids later in life as well, all right? So I was 39 when I had my first kid, even though I got married when I was 31, and my second kid, I was uh, 45, all right? Why? Because we were poor and we made that decision, all right? Julia was, um, like I said, 24 when we got married, and she had her uh, first child eight years after that, okay? So you can do the math, all right? So, um, so yeah, so, and, and uh, so it's just decisions that people make, okay? And these are all, you know, social trends that you can look at the kind of socioeconomics of that time, right? Um, you know, after decades decline, family size is starting to tick up a little, not much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put much belief in that, okay? And um, when we look at um, the, the growth in immigration, okay, it's always going to be those parts of the world, those countries that are having the most um, political strife, you know, that's associated with wars and things like that, okay? So at the time when this article was written in 2019, they were looking, you know, retrospectively back. Syria was, was having so much trouble. And... Um, and still, Northern Africa, Africa has lots of trouble, but there are other parts of Africa that are big time hot pots of trouble right now. And then we have the Ukraine as well. And that's where you see the immigrants from, where, wherever problems exist. We have immigrants in South America for the same reason. Okay. Um, so what's happening is there's, a, there's always transitions in the religious composition uh, during the Trump presidency. Um, there was a major pause taken in terms of of uh, immigration from the Arabic countries just because of the politics in our country. Um, and then, you know, things change based, based on who's, who's, office, who's in office, okay? So we can see those transitions in terms of immigration, all right? Awesome. All right, so that's article number two, all right? Now we can go down to um, the last article, which is this one, and we can, we can look at some, some, some real impacts and, and then some of the projections that you're going to make um, in terms of upcoming generations. And this is, you know, lifestyle. This is going to be lifestyle in the U.S. And we can compare how um, the sociology, the economics that everybody's experiences personally, also as a community, how this has changed. Um, this is not interactive again, but this one is right here. We get in here. Okay. Again, this was writ uh, written in 2018. Okay, so we can we can look back. It's always easy to look back historically and then to make projections. Okay, so this is in 2017. All righty, and um, so uh, what we're looking at here is the race race slash ethnic composition of the entire population. Okay, um, and we're looking at my parents' generation. Okay, as we no big surprise mostly a white generation, okay? You can see all the different my, um, um, ethnic minorities represented here. Um, this is my generation, okay? So we're getting starting to get some more diversity. Gen Xers, more diversity, okay? Millennials, more diversity, okay? All right, so, um, so yeah, so that's looking at race and, that's, race and ethnicity, okay? We can look at marital status right here, okay? And you see how that's changed, okay? So, you know, why in 2017 were there so many people not married? Okay, that's because of death. So you see there's a lot of widows here in this generation. Okay, but you can see as we move up here, and if we were to put the Gen Zers up here, we would see even lower rates of marriage. Okay, male education. Okay, all righty. Um, we see that. We can take a look here. Some college across the board. It hasn't changed that much. 
How about female uh, education, okay? Big change, all right? From my parents to me to the kids I should have had, but I didn't because I was late, late to the game, to you guys, okay? And we see that there's more and more uh, female education, how that's changing. Male in the labor force, all right? So there you go. Not a whole lot of my parents, okay? Why? Because they're retired, okay? They're not in the labor force, okay? Boomers, there's still a fair amount of us. Um, this is the meat and potatoes time of, of, of these people's lives, the Gen Xers, okay? And so and we see um, right here, this is a, kind of a look into the unemployment rate for these guys right here, okay? Female labor force, okay? And you see it's different. So it's kind of a trip to go back and forth, back and forth, okay? because of, of the, the, the reality of um, not having the, the opportunity, okay? Household incomes, okay? All righty. So these guys are not bringing in a lot of money. It's just about how, uh, how much money you're going to be making at that point in time, okay? Um, this is not your retirement that you're spending. This is your income that you're generating from either your job or a rental income or whatever it is, okay? Again, this is right here at the wheelhouse of the person. So these people in their 40s, their 50s, all right? And they're kicking ass right now, all right? We see down here that, that you see this trend of lost income, all right? Veterans, okay, it was a big deal for my parents, not as big a deal here in the smaller, smaller deal, okay? Metro status, where you live in, okay? And, um, you know, are you living in uh, urban places? Or are you living in farming communities? And there's been a trend towards more and more urban communities. So it's kind of fun to look at that and then make projections, okay? And then this is looking at the same thing on a graph-by-graph -graph basis, okay? As young adults, millennials have more education than previous generations, okay? We kind of saw that before, especially in women, okay? And we're looking across generations right here, okay? Okay. Um, we already looked at the definition right here, okay? So, yeah, so you can go read through the article, okay? And uh, that's where we're at here. So pretty awesome stuff. Um, you take the quiz. Sorry, guys, if you're new to the class, I, I usually tell people to open the quiz up in a separate window, and then you have two windows going back and forth, okay? You'll see that if you looked at my intro video, okay? All righty. So now we're going to look at some of, the, some of the consequences of who you are in terms of your generation and in terms of your personal economics. And so um, the, one of the big ones, okay, and you just kind of read through this. This is all part of the prompt. And here's some of the graphics right here, okay? And um, and in, in the end, this is what you're going to be addressing. So you kind of sift through all this in, 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 in the uh, uh, preparation for posting your discussion. One primary post and three posts, okay, on your friends, okay, where, you, where you're replying or making a comment on what they had to say, okay? So, um, you know, this is asking about uh, your parents. Are you gonna, are you gonna um, uh, let them live alone? Or are you gonna do that multi-gen thing, housing thing, okay? I want you to think about this question for you and your family, okay? What about multi-gen housing is an option? You know, more and more builders, okay? So if you're on the, the the development end, okay, meaning that you're a land developer, a real estate developer, um, there is the opp opportunity, you know, to build a house like this, and then what's called an accessory dwelling unit, okay, an ADU, also used to be called a granny shack, okay, right out there, all right? So you have your personal space and privacy, they have their personal space and privacy, but you're keeping a watchful eye on them. They can watch your kids, because you're both working and vice versa, you and your kids can watch them because they're getting older, all right? All righty. So the cool thing about that is with that kind of housing setup, okay, you can pool all of your funds, okay? So this is where we're kind of looking at the concept of the family collective, which is still a characteristic of most parts of the world. It's something that we've kind of lost our way in, in the United States here, but it's something we're, we, that we're, a lot of us are gonna have to revisit only because the cost of living is so insane in places like San Francisco Bay Area, Los Angeles, Southern, all of Southern California, New York City, okay, Miami, Florida, all these places where people want to live uh, have um, a, a significant expense associated with them, okay? All righty, so how does that stack up here, all right? So this is um, 
uh, a, an article that we've um, you again it's a Washington Post it, uh, oftentimes you can read it so you can check it out let's check it out see if I can get right in right and it talks about the Millennials okay the people that were this is a 2020 article the generation right behind me okay and how um, they're kind of screwed okay and uh, and and what is their share of the housing market so you come in here okay and Here's the baby boomers as of 2019, okay? Here's the Gen, Gen Xers, the guys who were right behind us, okay? And then the millennials, okay? And uh, we see that a very, 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 and again, this is um, looking from 2008 to 2019, okay? Um, and this is, this is the age of this group when this was written and how many people own housing, okay? Even the Gen Xers are lagging way behind us. They got about half the home ownership that we have, okay? What a bummer, all right? This sucks, okay? Why is this happening, okay? Because housing increases, uh, the, the cost of housing increases at a much higher rate than the, than the increase in salaries, all right? And so the equity I have in this home you know, um, you know, we bought this house when I was full-time professor. Julie was a full-time corporate attorney. I don't know how much we were making. Da, 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 da. By making about two hundred grand a year, close. Okay, at that time, we bought the house for four hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So now I'm not going to tell you how much I'm making, but it's not equivalent based on the value of this house being two and a half million dollars. Okay. So my salary, my wife's salary has not kept up. So we would never qualify for this house. Okay. That's where you guys are at. Okay. That's the huge issue. Okay. All right. And that's what this kind of article is all about. So you can check that out. All right. And then you can see how you stack up by looking right here. Okay. This is in SoCal. Okay. 2022. All right. So um, the housing affordability kind of index right here, HAI, okay? Um, and we see that um, it's going down and down. We see that there was almost, you know, what are we here, a 7% drop, okay? Um, going from 2021 to 2022 in terms of what percentage of a population can afford to buy a home, okay? This is the median Home price, okay, in California. This is a crappy house, believe me, $880,000, and it's really not that nice a place, okay? It's a fixer-upper, maybe um, a three-bedroom, one-bath, you know? It is what it is, you know? 15, 1,600 square feet, okay? This place is 3,300 square feet, all right? Um, so how much do you need to be making to afford this kind of fixer-upper house in California? So you'd need to be making... 200 grand and then you would just be you would be just you know all of your money going towards your property taxes your mortgage your home insurance yeah and you would be eating you know lots of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches okay that's you know what you're up against and so when we think about this this is why we want you to kind of think about um housing affordability and maybe forming a kind of a collaboration with generations your aunties or your uncles or maybe your parents is that an option that's what this is all about this right here, if you're really into this subject, this is this huge report about um, housing for older Americans. And it's a it's a big, big deal that older Americans um, are also priced out. OK, so if you're not as lucky as I was and didn't have your job take off and you're kind of in kind of more kind of hand to mouth. OK, when that means you're just, you know, basically working, paying rent. And, and maybe paying the bills and being able to survive to eat, but you're not making any headway. And then what happens? You go through retirement and, and you got nothing. You're living on Social Security that, you know, is, you know, a third of what you need. All right. So, um, and it's it's a big deal. Okay. We're going to refer to that later on. Um, there's a really um, cool documentary called Nomad, Nomad Land. I think it's called Nomad Land. Um, um, it, they got an Academy Award about this very issue uh, about older people becoming nomads because in, in living in trailers and tents and RVs because they can't afford to live. All right. All right, guys. Peace. Have a good Labor Day weekend. We'll see you next time.